Okay, hey, Jonathan here at Colfax Math. I'm going to go over finding inverses, and I have a five-step process to do that. Most important thing to note, really, is f of x is your y value. So f of x and y are interchangeable. f to the negative 1 of x, that is actually not uh, to the power of negative 1. It is saying it's an inverse function. So this is your inverse function. So that's the notation to say it's an inverse function. Okay, I have a five-step process. Step one is replace f of x with y. Step two is switch. Whoops, switch your x's and y's. Three is going to be solve for y. Step four is replace your new y to replace your new y with the function notation, inverse function of x. And then step five is plug in the value if you're given one. Okay, so this right here would be a, kind of a common problem right here. It's really a two-step problem. Step one is find the inverse function. So it's really saying, what is the inverse function of x? And then step two is, once you find that inverse function, take 15 and plug it in. Okay, so here I am. Let's use a little red pen here. So first thing I'm going to do is replace f of x with y. So I'm going to take that and replace it with a y. So that f of x just becomes y is equal to 6 plus 3, the square root of 1 minus 2x. Step 2 is saying switch the x and the y. So take that x, put it there. Take that y and put it there. So that now gives me x is equal to 6 plus 3, square root of 1 minus 2y. So that's step two. Now I need to solve for y. I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides, giving me x minus 6 equals 3 times that. I'll divide both sides by 3 to get the square root of 1 minus 2y. Still solving for y, I'm going to square both sides. That whole thing is squared. Square and square root will cancel. Now I have 1 minus 2y is equal to the quantity x minus 6 over 3 squared. Subtract 1 from both sides. That will cancel. Have to get rid of that negative 2. Divide both sides by negative 2. And now I have y by itself. I know it's a big ugly thing. But it's probably just as good to leave it that way. So now I've, let's see, let me run through my steps again. Replace f of x with y, switch my x's and y's, solve for y, so that's what I did there. So this is solving for y, right? y is now equal to that. Now step four, replace my new y with that function notation. So replace this new y with inverse function of x. And that's going to be equal to the quantity x minus 6 over 3 squared minus 1, all divided by negative 2. And then finally, step 5 is plug in the value of 15. So that's usually like part B of the problem. So I'm going to take that value of 15 and plug it in. So I take that value of 15 and plug it in there. Okay. So finally, step 5 is find the inverse function of 15. So I found the inverse function. Now take 15 and plug it in there. So I have 15 minus 6 divided by 3, quantity squared minus 1, all divided by a negative 2. 15 minus 6, 9, divided by 3 is 3, squared is 9, minus 1 is 8, so this is going to be a 8 in the numerator over negative 2, which is equal to negative 4. So again, this is how to find the inverse function. 
And then once you have the inverse function, plug in a value into the inverse function. And this is my five-step process. So hopefully that helped with finding inverse functions and plugging in values into inverse functions. Thanks for watching.